powered from the Perdomo Scar Studios on the Black Stage in Indian Trail, North Carolina, and broadcasting from the Drew Estate Studios in California. It's episode 309 of the Primetime Show. Tonight, we welcome back two guests, Henderson Ventura of Adventura Cigars and Adrian Acosta of the Cigar Culture as our special guests. And as always, the Primetime Show is sponsored by Saga Cigars. Delos Reyes has introduced another chapter to Saga, Saga Solez. Solez is a Spanish word that means leaves you after work in the spirit of the standing ideal of owning your own journey and making your own Saga. Saga Solez is the perfect companion to enrich those moments of choice, making them truly yours. The Saga Solez carries a blend of Criollo, Laura, and Peloto Cubana, wrapped in a selected Ecuador Shea Claro wrapper that generously delivers with elegance a surprisingly rich and balanced smoke. It's available in four sizes at an affordable price. Ask your retailer for Saga Celez. And by Perdomo Cigars. Awarded Nicaraguan Cigar of the Year in 2014 by Cigar Journal. The Perdomo 20th anniversary brand has consistently earned the highest scores in the industry and is the top seller in humidors around the world. Perdomo 20th anniversary requires tobacco has been carefully hand-selected and well aged for a minimum of eight years. The Perdomo 20th anniversary is offered in three distinct wrappers, a smooth, creamy Ecuador in Connecticut, a richer to Cuban seed Nicaraguan sun grown and a dark oily Cuban seed Nicaraguan Maduro. Combine these beautifully bourbon barrels wrappers with thick high priming binder and fill the tobaccos because each blend of balanced complexity with layers of rich flavors and smooth elegant aromas. Perdomo Cigars is a family owned and operated company headquartered in Miami, Florida with manufacturing and agricultural facilities in Esteli, Nicaragua. Perdomo's highly acclaimed cigar brands include the Perdomo 30th Anniversary or Double Aged 12 Year Vintage Perdomo 20th Anniversary Perdomo Reserve 10th Anniversary Line Perdomo Abano Bourbon Barrel Age, Perdomo at 23, Perdomo Inenso 70, and many more. For great tasting notes and pairing information, check out the Perdomo website at perdomocigars.com. By Cavaliers of Geneva. <laughs> Cavaliers of Geneva. Cavaliers Cigar Smoke Gold Stay Globe. Join the Inner Circle and follow Cavaliers Cigars on Instagram at Cavalier underscore Cigars and on Facebook at Cavalier Geneva Cigars. That's Geneva, G E N E V E. Visit your local tobaccos and join the movement as Cavalier Cigars. They're consistently regarded highly by cigar lovers everywhere, as well as high ratings from the cigar industry press. You'll want to follow them again on Instagram at Cavalier underscore cigars because they do some very unique giveaways throughout the whole year. Cavalier Cigars, Smoke Gold, and Stay Gold. And finally by Drew Estate, Dark, Bold, and Unapologetic. Black and Cigars that may one by Drew Estate is an intense journey into the uncharted, deepest, and heaviest depths of Maduro tobacco. This is a masterpiece collaboration between Metallica's James Hetfield, Sweet Amber Distillings, Rob Dietrich, and Drew Estate's Jonathan Drew. The All Maduro Black and Cigars M81 by Drew Estate is rich and powerful, but beautifully balanced, offering tantalizing notes of leather, chalk, and espresso that's perfect for both life celebrations and times of reflection. You could find them at your Drew Diplomat retailer. And remember, all the live streaming for the primetime show as well as California Studios for the Thursday Primetime Show, sponsored exclusively by Drew Estate. Well, welcome, everybody. This is Primetime Episode 309. Today's Thursday, June 27th, 2024. Will Cooper here. I am in the Perdomo Cigar Studios, and I'm joined cross-country by my good friend and colleague, Mr. Aaron Loomis. How you doing tonight, Will? A uh, rough week it's been, but I'm doing good. I'm doing good. It's just been a rough nice. week. A lot of stuff has uh, hit the front on me. I'm both home and work, so uh, okay. <laughs> um, I won't. I'll spare the drama, but you know, it's I'm doing better now. We're here on the show tonight. Um, good. Uh, you know, so not a bad week. It was a uh, certainly a busy week, so it was a um a good thing, and uh, we okay. are we're dealing with uh. A lot of heat, and, and there, there is a uh, a mouse in the cigar coop studios that I cannot catch, <laughs> and well, and is avoiding every trap I put. There but you he, go. He is running around here, and uh, he, he there is a dead or alive now. It's it's dead or alive. I'm there's, not, there's a there's a price on its head, huh? Price, yeah. So it, got I was wanted, doing, wanted posters in the house. Yeah, well, I'm doing the show with Dave and jukebox, and I see a mouse <laughs> run literally in the middle of the show, and he has been. I mean, I put like four traps. This, this mouse is avoiding these traps. Um, yeah. But what happened is, um, when we had the we had the lines um, dug up for fiber optic, right? And that's caused a problem with several people in the neighborhood. With, with right. Like, yeah, I, we yeah. only have I only have one that I've seen here. Uh, we got lucky, is what I'm saying. So, uh, okay. yeah, because when they dug it up, that's what happened. So, yeah. Um, and you know, the, the studio is is. A garage pretty much so it's very right. easy to get into the garage yeah um but yeah it's uh he 
And my wife's like, you got to use the humane traps. I'm like, I'm getting this thing now. It's like, and he's fast. So <laughs> yeah, I've only seen him like four times. It's the same mouse. Uh, you know, he's freaking running around here. So, um, we'll see what happens. So <laughs> yeah, well, that was yeah. fun. So spend the weekend, you get, take care of it. Mm hmm. Um, yeah, and it's just like it's kind of weird, Aaron, because you know, before we get into our guests, like June is always we used to always be the busiest month, like on mm -hmm. Coop, you know, it's been the slowest month this year. Oh, yeah, it's yeah, because it's, you know, not a lot of stories have really broke this week was a little different, but most of the month was pretty slow. Yeah, um, when usually it's this is the busiest month, well, yeah, because it's heading into the trade show, normally, yeah, so, right? So now so it's become the opposite. All yeah, the announcements would be normally be coming in, but now it's a different, it's completely different. Yeah, shift here. yeah, now it's different. Now, if if you're you know, now it's basically when when's the cigar coming, basically, so, yeah, uh, yeah, a lot of stuff. So, so that's kind of a little different, uh. So to speak, I've kind of adjusted to the only other time we had that was four years ago with the pandemic. So, sure. Yeah. But uh, but anyway, um, let's get into things with our we have two guests tonight. Um, we're going to talk about why they're both together here. Um, they're both uh, previous appearances. They've been on the show. So first, I want to introduce uh, the um, the co-owner of uh, Adventura Cigars, Henderson Ventura. And I want to introduce Adrian Acosta of the Cigar Culture. Gentlemen, welcome back to Primetime. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, William, to having us tonight. Aaron, how are you? Long time. Yeah, it's been a while. Yep. How are you, Henderson? How are you? How are you, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing great, man. Can't complain. Just got out of the fire tree a while ago. And we're here. Uh, yeah. Glad to be in the show again, guys. No, no, I uh, appreciate it as well. Um, I know Adrian and I were talking about this, um, and I said, yeah, I got to get back to you with some scheduling, and th I dropped the ball on that. Um, then I had some travel that was really kind of impacting that because I didn't know when I was going to be doing shows. Uh, but I'm glad we were able to get it, and that was on my my end, not your end, certainly, guys. So so thank you guys so much. Thank you, man. Yep, yep. We're thank here, you. we're here. Yep. Um. It, you know, I know folks know Henderson. Um, for folks who Adrian, for folks who may not know you, uh, we've had you on a show uh, a couple of years ago. Actually, it was a really well attended show too. Um, why don't you tell folks um, a little of who you are and what the cigar culture is? I think the uh, the cigar culture back again. I repeat this several times. Uh, it's all of us. Whoever who enjoy passion and uh, love for the craftsmanship of these beautiful cigars that we smoke every day is the cigar culture. Uh, I mean, I'm always uh, down to share my knowledge and to share the, the industry uh, amongst I go in the, in, the, in the road in the U.S. Uh, for example, tonight I just finished an event. I'm going from Fort Myers to Miami. I say I cannot miss the show. I have to be in it. So this you can more be more real than this today. So oh. <laughs> no, no, uh, we appreciate it as well. Um, no, we appreciate it as well. You going through the Everglades right now? I'm going to. I'm going to start hitting the Alligator Alley right now. Okay, that should be. We've never had anyone do a show from Alligator Alley. So it's. A, it's, a, <laughs> it's a, I've driven Alligator Alley. It's. A, uh, I I drove it like 30 years ago when it was like a two lane road. It was. Uh, now it's a lot easier to drive it. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, so, you know, what I want to talk about, we're kind of going to get into some things. What I want to do is I want to talk about the connection between both of you. And then I'm going to dive into a few things, Henderson, on, on Aventura, and then we're going to get into the project that you guys were talking about. So, um, Hender Henderson, uh, actually, Adrian, you are you are a, uh, you're a sales uh, broker for Aventura Cigars. That is correct. Uh, I'm the top elite broker for Aventura Cigars in the U.S. Yeah. Yep. Um, and, uh, you know, how did you guys connect? How did you guys meet? I'm kind of curious uh, about that. Please, Henderson, uh, your turn. <laughs> so, so I, I, I met uh, Adrian when I was like probably 20 years old. Uh, I was working in the factory and his dad and, and my dad used to work together back in the days at Davidoff. So my dad was the um, uh, general manager for Cedar Factory. That is the factory that do the uh, all the Davidoff product. And then he, Adrian is there, 
is a genetic engineer that he developed pretty much all the seeds and and all the hybrid tobacco for Davido for years and years. So it was in charge of all the fermentation and all the tobacco process for Davido. So they were co-worker for over 20 years. So when my dad opened up the factory and I was working there, like uh, I was like 20 years old, Adrian came for a trip from New York to Santiago and his dad took him to my dad factory. And and we got introduced, we, my dad and his dad, they got into their conversation in the corner and then Adrian me introduced ourselves and we started our own conversation. And Adrian by that time was working at Trump Tower and, and he w- was curious, you know, to learn about cigars and to get into the tobacco industry. And, and we were sharing ideas and all that. And then my dad and his dad came back from the uh, doing a tour for the factory. We were in the office and they were like, uh, you know what? One day you guys are going to work together. And Adrian was like, those guys, like, uh, <laughs> I think Adrian, by that time, I even have a plan to work in the cigar industry. And and that's how we met. That's how we connect. Yeah, I, I, for me, uh, when they mentioned, yeah, yo, one day you guys are going to work together, I said, uh, in what capacity? I mean, yes, I was trying to get in in what field uh, to work in the industry. And uh, the year passed, and then I get my uh, my first job in the industry in, in Nash Sherman Town House in New York. And then, the you know, the rest is history. I continue my, my labor and my professionalism in this, in this industry. And the, the rest is history. Now we work to, together. I represent uh, Aventura as one of my portfolio in my brokerage. And we're having fun sharing beautiful smokes, great cigars, and sharing the culture. That's awesome. Awesome. Yep. Yep. Uh, yeah, no, that's great. Now, I want to just kind of turn back to Henderson for a minute because there's been a lot going on with Aventura, and we're, we're going to get into the Chancellor Project we're going to talk about. But so, Henderson, you've had a last couple of years, there's been a lot of changes uh, with Aventura cigars. Um, first, the first thing, obviously, everyone knows about the factory, uh, but you guys have recovered very nicely. And uh, earlier this year came the news that uh, you have now moved into your own. Uh, dedicated factory. So talk a little about that. So yeah, after the fire, we um, we have a lot of up and downs uh, because we moved to the older factory we had and, and it's in a smaller factory. We have some limitation with the space and, and the production. And, and we have, you know, many private labels that we make there. So I was like, let me, let me make a, uh, in a small factory so I can um, start rolling cigars there for Aventura temporary until we open the, the big factory. Right. But I don't know. There is something with me that I don't know how to operate in a halfway. <laughs> and I just started to put the factory together and end up like a building, like a real factory, you know, to work on. So I invest like some quite a money there, you know, putting Aventura factory together. So yeah, I think like um, uh, we kind of divide the the project of what is Aventura through with we, we talk about Galera William Ventura. Uh, we took our own way, but everything is still part of the William Ventura factory. Um, I still um uh, behind scenes like uh with the tobacco and all that, and. And you're still doing like a some kind of uh how do you say like like advisor uh for the company because I was managing the company for the last fifteen yeah. years, so um that's I, I'm I'm gonna still part owner anyway of Tabacalera William Ventura. So um it's still the same, you know, uh just that I'm running the operation for Aventura in a separate location right now. Sure. Sure. I was gonna ask. Yeah. I was actually gonna ask you that question. Um, because I remember we talked a lot when you were on the show. I said so. That's that's good news. But Aventura kind of has its own dedicated space. Is the best way to put it. And it's like a yeah. holy run. I don't want to say subsidiary or holy run, run enterprise right now. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the only thing you know, uh, I'm 
I have uh, a more freedom to do like a more of uh, of the idea that I was uh, having through the last 18 years, you know, to implement some different concept in terms of manufacturing cigars. And, and, and yeah, uh, we have a beautiful small factory, uh, just running cigar for Aventura and, and we've been taking, like, I will say the quality of the construction and, and, and the blending and everything to another level. And, and we're very happy with the result we have in the last, uh, 10 months. Um, it's been 10 months already. Yeah. That we opened up the factory. Yeah. So. So we're pretty happy with this project. Uh, I will say that this uh, new factory is gonna be a game changer for what it what it is like uh, a new standard of quality here as a manufacturer in the Dominican Republic. So we're pretty happy. Even the Chancellor was the first cigars that we produced in that factory. Um, that was a project that we had done back in two thousand twenty one. And we aged the cigar for a whole year before the release. And just about like a few days before the release, uh, factory got burned down. Oh. So, yeah. But anyway, luckily we have um, enough inventory of tobacco in other warehouses. And, and we were able to replicate the blends and continue with the blends that we had. You, I know, like, like I said, a fire, a fire like that is bad, and I know obviously it hit you guys really hard. But you guys, yeah. I, I gotta say, you guys, you did a good job navigating some very troubled waters. It seems like uh, other companies, I, 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 I probably would have seen, really would. I mean, I'm not saying it wasn't an impact, you guys. It obviously was, but you, you guys navigated those waters really good that year. You know. When until the new factory was open, so I mean, hats off to you guys on that. I mean, it, that must have been a challenge to even keep that going. Yeah, I, I, I mean, luckily we have my dad stay with the old factory, making just cigar for fun for himself there. Like, um, he always wants to keep like a, the old small factory and be there, like a do his stuff. And just because of that we were able to keep rolling a cigar. Yep. Uh so and 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 the other thing on the other hand, poop, like uh cigars is the only thing that this family know how to do. I've been my dad being in the business over fifty years, he started to roll cigar when he was nine years old. I started to work at the cigar factory when I was seventeen, even before I went to college. And it's been the whole family doing the same thing. So we have an option more than uh, gain, get into our feet and continue pushing, you know, and get back to get back to work and, and, and do what we need to, what we know, man. Yeah. So uh, I think at the beginning, it was like, uh, let's start from zero. Uh but the most challenging thing is being right now. You know, when it's been two years investing money, you know, back to back. Uh, and that's the most challenging thing. You know, we build, I build a factory for uh, my own project, Aventura. And the family was also investing money building the new factory, uh, trying to get back on track. So it's been, it's been a, uh, a, uh, uh, Two hard years for us, uh, but I know that we are committed, you know, to to do great things in the cigar industry. That's that's great. Um, you know, actually, when I was down at Pro Cigar, I saw the the construction going on and everything because I passed by there. So, I, uh, of the I think it was a, this was the William Ventura one. Um, because yours is is yours adjacent to William Ventura, or is it is it separate, comp- like on a separate area completely? A separate area completely. Okay, that's what I thought. That's what I but thought. But we we are like a fifteen minutes apart right now. Yep. 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 Yeah. All right. I so want to I, go ahead. I go ahead. I'm sorry. Yep. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go ahead. No, I, I was going to. There was another question I was going to ask you outside the factory, but if you had anything else you wanted to say about the factory. No, no, no. I'm just fifteen minutes away. Uh, at the new location of the new factory for uh, Adventura, that is called Tabacalera Mino del Rey. 
uh this is um is in my in the town and the neighborhood that my dad grew up so uh, and the uh, and the factory the name of the street that the factory is located is called the Ventura street and by the end of the street is uh my grandma's house where my dad burned and grew up there right so it's, it's cool you know to get back to the roots you know like where it's like uh uh some history of the family and the cigar there so it's cool nice nice um i was gonna ask you i want to ask you another quick quickly about the distribution because it's kind of timely a little today because you guys did switch your distribution um and actually you, you were with Sutliff, which i ironically got sold today uh to stg yeah. but you did do a new distribution this deal i don't know what folks uh, may want to know about that change um, I, I, it was a simple change. Sadly, uh, it was great to us uh, for the last three years. Um, uh, but the sadly was based in Virginia. We moved distribution to a location in Florida. Makes sense. Um, yeah, it's like a more. Uh, it, it was a uh, much better for us, like uh, in terms of logistic and and timing for for shipping and all of that, and. Yeah, and there was like some more details, you know, there's just something, a distribution that we right. can have more control of. Uh, we always have like a total control of, uh, of our distribution. Just a few details that sadly, if it was a bigger corporation that I'd do a lot of pipe tobacco and all that. Yeah. And, and we were like, uh, we found it was convenient, you know, to switch that distribution to Florida. So, yeah, uh, it makes sense with customers nothing and crazy. stuff. Yeah, it probably makes sense. Yeah, nothing crazy. Yeah, exactly. Um, but yes, and really transparent because like y y they did your warehousing and stuff. But in terms of like guys like Adrian, they're they're your ground boots on the ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And even even for Adrian, that is one of the main guys for Aventura in the states. You know, he's in Florida also. You know. Yep. Uh, he can even drive and pick up samples there. It's different. Like when you need to go to Virginia. Yeah. Uh, um, pretty much if we used to make a trip to Virginia it was because we have to go to the warehouse that's it right right yeah, yeah pretty much yeah pretty much yeah uh, yeah um but now let's get into the chancellor a bit um Adrian I remember Adrian and I were in Mexico City and Adrian was dropping some hints of this project to me uh remember that that Sunday <laughs> he's dropping yeah. a lot a lot of hints about memorable. this it was yeah. memorable that was yeah 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 after we climbed that after we climbed up that hill uh to the castle <laughs> which, yeah, I was, yeah. which i felt better that i was that other people were more winded than me uh, i felt better about that and young younger people more but that was that, that climb it's like unbelievable <laughs> i thought i was gonna die <laughs> uh there's this castle we went beautiful. to and, and the busing, the busing yeah yeah it was um, and it didn't look very steep to go up it, but it was a long slope, the long winding slope. <laughs> we went up, uh, but no, I, uh, and I know, so Adrian and I, yeah. we, we spent a lot of, we had some good times in Mexico. He was starting to drop some hints of this project, um, to me on this. So this is something that, you, and you mentioned Henderson, this is something that was in the works for a long time. Um, so just from, uh, how the branding is of this, uh, you guys launched a, a brand, that I think was wildly successful. Uh, Royal Return that you had the uh, the Queen's Pearls and, uh, and the King's the King's Gold. Uh, so this has become the third installment, which is the Chancellor, which kind of has a, a connection to that. So I don't know if you want to talk about what the theme and how this fits into the whole Royal Return theme is. So uh, uh, go ahead, go ahead, yeah, go ahead, Adrian. No, 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 please, I insist. Go ahead. All right. So uh, the. In 2020, yeah, 2020, we released a project that was like a, for the retailer that was called the Elite Program. But at the same time, we also uh, did the project for the brokers, uh, the our partners we had Ventura. That is uh, called the Elite Program for brokers or for the sales guys. So we set some goals that year and and whoever that reached the goal for that year 
uh, we'll have the opportunity to have a blend custom made uh, for uh, for the sales guy. So Adrian, Adrian was the first guy to won the hour uh, uh, into the adventure company, and and beside that, he won the hour. We have like a very intimate. Um, relationship, you know, with the uh, between the two families, with his family, my family. So we started to develop the project, you know, and, and Adrian in, in Soho became like uh, the right hand for us at, uh, in the Aventura team. Uh, it was the first guy to carry Aventura into the United States. It was the first guy to reach the goal. Uh, it's been the guy that uh, being me, being more in the road with me, uh, I will say Adrian and me was the guy that uh, positioning Adventura uh, together into the United States. I will say Adventura could be in the place that we are right now without the help of Adrian. And, and we, I'm, I'm, I'd say that Adrian is my right hand. So on the concept we have in Twitter, every line that we release, you know, it has a content, a meaning, a history behind. Uh, so we started to look into the Aventura portfolio and, and we look into the Roger return. Uh, and it was like the, the chancellor and the meaning of the chancellor is like the right hand for the king. Yep. Uh, the guy that is like, uh, um, dealing with all the bottles, uh, with the king, you know, and, and this is Adrian, you know, for us, you know, the chancellor. So it's part of the royal return. Uh, in the blending, it was a more interesting theme that happened with this line, uh, because just a, a few years before, I have a call, uh, from one of my suppliers that was like, "Listen, Henderson, we have this tobacco that is a, a Peralta seed that's Adrian Dad, um, and we just did an experiment here, and we just have like eighteen hundred pounds." Uh, we don't know what to do with it. Like, uh, are you interested to do the acquisition of that tobacco? Maybe try or whatever. So I went there, tried the tobacco. I thought it was very interesting. So the tobacco, the main tobacco that we're using on this uh, cigar is a Piloto Mejorado. It's a hybrid seed. With, uh, it's a hybrid of six different tobacco in once. Uh, but the mainly uh, tobacco in that hybrid is Piloto. So that's why you call it Piloto Mejorado. And that tobacco was grow was grew in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Uh, it's very cool because he had have like that uh, Piloto and, and Cubanish uh, flavor profile, but way more intense and way more sharp. We tried the tobacco. It was very really intense and strong. And we do another year of fermentation, then let it sit for another three years. So when the can, when the time came, uh, we started to play with that tobacco that was uh, 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 Adrian's that seed. And we wanted to use that tobacco special for Adrian, for his cigar. And, and Adrian came down, we sit down, trying to plant the cigar. Uh, and then we had my brother Weaver, that that was the guy that did the base of the whole blend because he was used to work with Peralta also for another fifty years, and Adrian and my brother Weaver, uh, they they finalized the blend. So uh, then, like uh, I t- taste the cigar, I was like, listen, this is a very good cigar, probably uh, more like an old school style, very much. It does very- fit necessary. Uh, the flavor profile of the Aventura, and that's very interesting because it's different, but it needs like a little bit more body, you know. So I did some twists on the blend uh, to make the cigar a little bit more full. And, but that's a job from Adrian and Weaver himself. I just was fucking around with the blend, like a twist in the blend, just to make a fit to a younger generation. But Adrian and Weaver have a similar palette that they love more like a mild to medium body. A more smooth, a more sophisticated, well balanced, and I like a little bit more bold, more rich cigar. So we we hit the point to the middle, uh, and that's how uh, that project got done. 
uh, we started the the blending process in 2020. Uh, we end up uh, fin- uh, producing the cigar in 2021. And even all the video that we did for the release of that cigar, they were made in the old factory. And and this is it. I think that's one of the greatest cigars that we ever create. And not just that, that's just one tobacco, but we also use on that blend uh, tobacco from seven different countries. Wow. It's one of the most sophisticated blend that we ever create. Um, and the reason because we use tobacco from different countries like that is because the base is that Piloto Mejorado that is very sharp and we were trying to get all the tobacco that have the same level or intensity so they can balance out the blend. And one of the tobacco that we use in that blend that is very unique is a Toscano tobacco from Italy, really? Parker, uh aged for seven years. And and the intensity that is marking is uh, from that tobacco and uh, the spiciness and the uh, and the sharpness of that piloto mejorado with the with the Toscano is make like a nice marriage. Also we're using a Corojo wrapper from Ecuador. Uh, age for five years. Also, it's a nice rosado wrapper. Uh, one of my favorite tobacco to work with, and 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 that's what make the chance of something special. Tobacco from five to seven years of age, uh, unique tobacco, uh, very untypical. That tobacco, that piloto mejorado, it was an experiment. We don't think that we can get that tobacco anymore. Oh. Uh but this is uh something very special. Yeah. The yeah, you know, the, the Italian tobacco, um, it doesn't overpower. The fire cured is not overpowering this at all. Um, it's the age. Yeah, it's not in fact until I would have even guessed it was fire cured in this unless you told me it. But I could see now I'm I guess I'm thinking of my head and processing a little. I could maybe see it now, yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, after you uh, after you knew, you can start to find out like where is the that flavor profile coming out of. Yeah, it's it's very unique. Um, and it's it's also got the quintessential Aventura qualities. If if that makes sense, there's there's things that I can still tell. This this is very much an Aventura cigar, but it's still very different from what you've done before. Yep. Yeah, it, that, it, that was the goal. That was yeah, the goal. Yeah, it's got, like, yeah, it's got some of those woody notes, which I always associate. Uh, completely different. Yeah, I associate a lot of those woody notes with, with a lot of the Aventura Coraline things. So um, it definitely makes – but there's there's definitely some different things in here. I, I've not smoked anything, like, with a profile like this before. I mean, I'm going to – yeah. So so that's the, the – so the good news – the bad news is you guys are not going to be able to do this again. It's a one and done pretty much. That's a one and done. That's a limited release, limited edition, and, and whatever we make, that's it. Yeah, it's even that crazy that uh, I was talking to Adrian the other day. Adrian, are you still there? I'm here. All right. I was talking to Adrian the other day that uh, this cigar we we use the whole batch of that tobacco, and, and I was telling like this cigar, whatever box you have, is unique. There is not a box that is similar to the other. Because from that a limited batch of tobacco we were using from the seco to the ligero until it was, it was gone. So there is some blend that have that piloto seco. There is like a batch of cigar, let's say 5,000 cigars that were made with seco. And then another 10,000 cigars that were made with viso. Another another 5,000 cigars that were made with uh, the ligero tobacco. Okay. So you can get like a mal more more like a smoother uh, uh, chancellor, another like is more intense, and then another that is a little bit stronger. And every box is unique on that cigar. That's a one-time release. You get your box, that's what you got. That's it. Yeah, I was going to say, mine has definitely got some boldness to it. Um, So I might, I don't know which, I'm assuming I might have gotten one of the La Hera one, but yeah, it's definitely a bolder cigar. Not going to knock me down, but it's got some boldness, got some, I could taste La Hera, uh is my feeling in this, at least. Yep. Yeah, so that's a that's a unique thing about that cigar. Very interesting. So very for interesting. me the for me the chancellor is a, the best quick way to put it in. Uh, it's elegant, intriguing, and rare. Uh, 
when I when I mentioned those words to Henderson a couple of years ago, uh, when he asked me what I'm trying to achieve uh, when in the blend, and I tell him the same thing. I think he'd nail it. Uh, he was right on the spot. I want something like that represent us, but also to highlight this the tobacco in, in there uh, coming from from my from my dad. You know, so I want to highlight as well. Henderson told me as well that uh, if you want to change the blend because of tobacco purposes, and he said no, I want to continue like that. That's why he used in some patches different uh, parts of the of the of the plant. I mean, of, of that variety. What so this the the thing that's kind of keeping it limited is the tobacco from your dad's farm. What's making you guys? What's making maybe your dad from preventing him from maybe growing another crop of this? What would kind of stop that? No, the thing is that that tobacco is uh, Adrian's dad's seed, but it was growing in Lancaster. Okay, yeah, that's so right. The farmers, the farmers in Lancaster, they typically uh, grow Pennsylvania tobacco and yeah. Connecticut and Broadleaf right. tobacco. Right. This is way bigger. It's a whole different process. Yep. And compared to a, a Cuban seed tobacco that for maximum grow like uh, between 12 to 16 leaf usable, 12 leaf. Uh, and do you need to do the, the harvesting by different primings instead of cut the whole tree? You know, that's not something that they used to. And the eel for and it's not, it's not profitable. Got it. Got so, it. So uh, I figured out how the tobacco is going to taste growing land and caster because we have the relationship there. But it's not necessary to have any business potential. Sure. So yeah, I, I, I see what you're saying. Yeah. That's the reason because it is what it is. Right. It is what it is. Right. And, and hats off to you for not like just trying to grow that somewhere else and put it into the blend and say, you know, that that's a good job by you guys there. Yeah. To keep, to keep it yeah. like, yeah, to keep it like that as well. Yeah, thank you. Yep. You know, if I would have smoked this tobacco as, as a burrito, like just roll that up and smoke it, what would, I, what would some of the characteristics I'd get of that? Um, that, was, that that's, that's a nice story. That's a nice story. Please, Anderson. Tell him. <laughs> uh, first of all, first of all, the first things uh, with the piloto based tobacco is like uh, is one of the spicier tobacco uh, Cuban seed that you can get, but also at the same time, it has some smoothness and the aroma of that tobacco, that kind of floral notes and the retro hell that is unique from the piloto cubano, and. Uh, but it's a tobacco that is very sharp and intense and the mouth feeling, but the retro of that tobacco is like uh, is, is completely another harmony separate to the mouth feeling that is like that floral uh, uh, notes on the on the retro. So that's the first uh, characters of that tobacco. But the difference is uh, of that tobacco being grown in the U.S., is like a it gives you like a more like a kind of mineral or uh, taste, mm-hmm. not not typically from the Dominican grow tobacco or Cuban grow tobacco that make that tobacco very different. You can feel that tingling in your mouth, like a more like a kind of mineral, but that's why we use on that blend just like a small percentage of that tobacco. From that tobacco, we just use twenty percent in the whole blend. Okay. And to balance out, then you don't get that much mineral and spice out of that cigar. But that's a that's a first characteristic of that tobacco. Yeah, it, it's a lot. A lot of times I hear from like a, a and you could correct me. A, a blender will will go to Pennsylvania tobacco to strengthen up the blend, like make it stronger. <laughs> um, it, is that the case with this tobacco or it's, is it really put in for the unique flavor or both? Same. Okay. Uh, 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 I mean, the purpose it wasn't to get the uh, strength on that cigar. Uh, we did a longer fermentation that we use, that we do in, in the regular tobacco. This one just to smooth out that tobacco and try to get more sweetness out of. Um, but yeah, the, the Pennsylvania soul is very predominant in terms of nicotine. Uh, yeah. and mean it all into that tobacco 
that that can increase a lot the strength of the tobacco just by being growing that soil. Uh, so, so yeah, I I would say even if we use the seco um, of tobacco in the blend, you still can taste the the strength of the tobacco. Okay, got just it. by being grown in Pennsylvania. Yep. Got it. Adrian, how much were you involved in the blend development with this? What was kind of your role in this? How hands-on were you? Uh, talk a little about that. So uh, uh, when, when, when everything started, um, we, we, st we, we tried the, the, the pudder grade tobaccos. And I said, Henderson, we got a big challenge here because we don't know. This is a... Uh, we don't we don't have any expertise touching this 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 type of tobaccos and it was really challenging uh but i uh henderson is uh hands down on a daily basis into the blending aspect i yeah, i was like uh he wants to give me the opportunity to blend with him but i want to him the opportunity to so so he can be himself as well so i would say this project has like a, the best from both of both of us uh, i think henderson is a great uh creator uh, he uh, accomplished 110 percent of the of the blend that we train. I mean, I think he preferred when we and we would sit down trying to uh, trying to mess with these tobaccos. Uh, I think he was right. And then when he gave me a couple of months later, when he gave me the the, the last result, I was like, "Man, you're a genius." Uh, hands down to him. Uh, it's all him. But I think he has the best from both from both words. Uh, I think uh, my 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 profile of smoking is totally different than him. But at the end of the day, we're trying to satisfy those rare enthusiasts that they want to try something different. Uh, I sounds like a broken record, but I said that I always said that we're living now in the best scenario for cigar smokers because uh, it's a lot of great cigars out there, and we're trying to give the best experience on the chancellor. Yep. No, uh, yeah, and there's a lot. I know, like, with your previous blend is, like, with the Scar Culture blend, very much a similar thing. It was very different. It wasn't just, like, the yeah. same cigar I'm getting. Adrian's been getting too diplomatic with this conversation. <laughs> Seriously, he was involved 80%. The whole, the whole flavor profile of that blend, it was, like, a, based on his taste and what he <laughs> likes. <laughs> The only thing that I did uh, on the end, it was like um, to make it taste a little bit more aventuring, a little bit more aggressive. Other than that, it was like uh, uh, he pushing to get a specific profile into the cigar. That kind of like uh, earthiness, kind of mushroom taste, yeah, definitely like mushroom very note. old school, classic, yeah. you know, the aroma, the... The very thin wrapper that's Rosado color that he loved, and 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 it's pretty much all he his ideas. The strength level and the intensity of the cigar. This is me. That was my last touch, but he yeah. he was pretty involved. He did like about six trip, you know, trying to get this blend done, and it was like. Uh, he became a pain in the ass for a while. <laughs> that was, I was gonna ask if he was, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. So that's how it is. That's how it is, William. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, we're pretty happy. I I I was very impressed by. It. I'm I'm a big believer of the teamwork and also like uh, to, uh, uh, play with tobacco. We uh, another person that is not involved into a cigar manufacturing on the daily basis, because we here in the DR, we here into a cigar factory. Adrian's out there trying different cigars and listen to the consumers uh uh feedback and all that and and we both together you know sit down to create the blend uh it was something spectacular and I will say unique and, and an amazing experience and and that's why we were able to create an amazing cigar so very good you that's know where it is I, I don't think I've ever asked this question, Henderson, to you. I know we had it on the show last time, but I don't know if I ever asked this. These bands are great. I love these bands. Uh, they're very unique. Talk about, like, these bands and how you guys came up with this concept here. Because these aren't paper bands. I don't know. And uh, they're very, like, they're, they're kind of very flexible. Like, you know, when you take them off, it's not 
So it's not paper, but it's not like a hard piece of metal here. Uh, talk a little about what went into it. How did this concept come up with these bands? And, and talk a little about that. Uh, that's a Marcel idea, my partner. Uh, he's the one in, uh, that developed pretty much all the concept for Aventura. So uh, I think... I don't know where the idea come from for him, but I guess that is from the champagne pack, uh, packaging. He's a champagne guy. He's into the wine business, and it and has I that feel. That, yeah, it has that feel yeah. of a seal. Yes. So, so he did the prototypes of some labels, like, but they were like a kind of the the red color from Adventure and blue, and and some different color, but made in metal. I'm just like a that guy that wants to twist everybody uh thinking and 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 we did the gold and we did the silver and we did like the different colors the green spur. Yep. But the the main idea is all Marcel. And and I think it's come from there. Yeah, but you... uh, uh, other than uh, but at the same time, the Roger return uh is mean like a... The whole uh, uh, history we we had Ventura is how everything started with this, into the cigar industry, right? Yeah. When the Europeans started to explore, the navigate, and they got they discovered the New World, they got into the Dominican Republic, Cuba, and they discovered gold, tobacco. They saw people smoking tobacco. They started to trade those stuff back to Europe, and so after they explored, they navigate, they conquered the land. Uh, they started to bring back the role, the, the, the goods to the Roger family. So the king's goal, uh, it means a gift for the king. Uh, and the, uh, the Chris Purr is, it's been a gift to, to the queen. So, right. uh, we want something to represent, you know, gold and something to represent like a purse. So, right. uh, in, in, but, Walking in every sense that you, when you torture the man, when you smoke the cigars, you know that represent the king, that represent the queen. So that's a that's the whole theme behind Adam Sir. Yeah, and I gotta give you credit. Um, you know, when I got, I remember when I first got a Queen's Pearl. I'm like, I hope I can get this band off. I was like, because I was worried. You know, it's a thin wrapper, but uh, <laughs> it, it, so I didn't have any problems, which was good. So. Um, uh, which is we, I, the, you know, like I said, I was I wasn't as worried about a broadleaf one, but this one I was like, man, this is really thin. But no, you did a good, they guys did a good job on it. Um, it's a nice touch. Mm -hmm. It's a nice. Thank you, I feel. Appreciate I feel it. like. I feel like you know. I always. I don't throw out a lot of cigar bands. I got these jars all over the place. Uh, but at least these, I feel like, well, you know, I don't want to throw them into a jar. I put them into a, a nice little box and they keep them. So, uh, it's kind of a good memory, like going back and look at you know what I smoke. So it's it's it's, it's a fun thing. Um, next time I see you, I, I will try to get you some uh, the metal stickers. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man, that's awesome. We have, a lot of, we have a lot of infamous awards. We have a lot of infamous awards. We have the most annoying box in the industry. They talk all the time in the inventory. We have the most annoying uh, rings. We have a lot of things, great things. I like famous. the rings. I like the rings. They're not annoying to me. I like them. The, the talking box, it, it it's different. It was cool. I remember when you guys were showing that last year at the trade show. It, yeah, it's unique. It, it's unique. Yeah, it was. It was. It was really cool. And then you did the bands on La Llorona, uh, which is that kind of double band, which was kind of pretty cool with that. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. 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 And you took. Well, this... is one of my favorite bands. And then, uh, do you know what? Uh, uh, um, also, William, I want to take this opportunity to announce that we're releasing a new cigar uh, next month. Uh, we're gonna have the launching event party at the Smoking in Florida in Boynton Beach. It's gonna be called Adventura the Blue Eye Jack Revenge. I saw uh, some like samples at the trade show you guys had of that. Yes, you, yeah, sort of, they uh, were not banded at the time, but yeah, no. So, that's uh, the following story of the sh second chapter of Adventura. So, we end up the chapter of the, fir the first chapter with the Rudy Return. Then we uh, that was telling more the story how everything started in the, into the cigar industry, and then the second chapter is more about the character when they were navigating into the new war, and and they have all those war into the ocean with the pirates and stuff like that. Yep. And, and that's where the Barbarossa invasion came in. Now we have the Blue Eye Jack revenge uh coming out. So it's the following story of the of the same saga. So. 
Um, that's uh, an amazing cigar. It's been one of my favorite cigars that I ever create. Amazing. And and the uh, label is also one of the most gorgeous labels that I ever that we ever create. So we we pretty happy and excited to that cigar came out and see the feedback from the people. Um, it's gonna be an interesting summer with that cigar. So I said Blue Eyed Jack is a pirate, some sort of a pirate character. Exactly. And he's a darker character, kind of like this darker side of this, right? There's a, a more lighter side, you know. Lighter side, but uh, but in that, yeah. in that, yeah. And yeah, but is more that... sweeter because sometimes the revenge is sweeter, you know. Ah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> ah, good. Yeah, you got uh, the uh, and that's gonna be a regular production line going forward. Yeah, that's gonna be a regular production. Okay. So it's coming out in the same sizes that we do in, that we have in the whole portfolio, Corona. Uh, six by forty four, robusto five by fifty two, and uh, Taro, uh, uh, six by fifty four. But I'm also working on the creation of uh, Lancero for that line. It's amazing. Nice, nice. And that's gonna launch down at Smoke In. You said next month. Yes. Very good. Yeah, I know Abe is a very, very big fan of your blends. Uh, because I, 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 you know, I obviously work with Abe and. Uh, he is in love. He is in love with that two size of uh of uh the, the king's the golden two. Yeah, he the loves that. Go- he loves that cigar. Yeah, uh, and it's really actually, good. It's a nice size. It's a nice size too. Actually, we did the premiere of that cigar at the uh, at the uh, Red Meat Lover uh, dinner for the TGS uh, this year. Uh, but we is now official officially launched yet. So. Okay. It's coming out sometime this summer, officially. So it's going to be officially available nationwide. Exactly. Nice. Nice. Uh, nice. Uh, and for folks who may not be familiar with the size of the tooth, what, what can you tell us about that size? Uh, I mean, there's a half Corona box press, 4x44. That was a cigar that I create like uh, uh, for myself, like uh, to enjoy, you know, what I'm driving, you know, short smoke, short smoke. And... So, but I make it. I made it box press, you know, because uh, uh, broadleaf is a is a thick tobacco. Uh, they have big veins, and for a short cigar like that, we were trying, you know, to avoid some of those stuff. And and the box press make it like a little bit smooth and the feeling and the torture. So that's why it's a box press. And it also tastes like way different, you know, more sharp but stronger, but very rich. Yeah, when, very when... rich. When Abe gave me that cigar, um, I said I could see totally like why you guys did it at the Red Meat Lovers dinner, because it, it's got this like <laughs> it's got it's a very it's a cigar it's kind of a meaty smoke I don't know how else to put it uh it just seemed like yeah this is like a perfect cigar I w- I was at Pro Cigar so I didn't go to that dinner um but that you know he gave me one I'm like I could see why that cigar was a, a good selection it really had this meaty quality to it yeah yeah it does. It yeah, does. yeah, yeah, definitely uh, does. It definitely does. That that that's a cigar that that became like a kind of a hit before it came out, really. Yeah, yeah. Like there's a lot of people talking about that cigar everywhere that I go. There's people talking about this cigar and mentioned that cigar to me. Yeah, no, it's uh, it, it said it got some nice buzz out of the uh great smoke that weekend. I know that so. Uh, yeah. and it was, it was, I, I got to agree what I had it. I thought it was my favorite size of that blend as well. I was like really surprised, uh, that, cause I'm not, I normally don't gravitate to a cigar with that size. And I thought it really worked well with that blend with the press as well. Yeah. yeah. This is something cool. Also like, uh, um, uh, for us to have our own factory right now for Aventura, because we have uh, like a little bit more space and freedom, you know, to create more unique, uh, stuff. I mean that's one and uh, a new addition for the King's Gold. King's Gold has been one of the most successful cigars that we have in the whole portfolio, uh, and we adding that new size. But we also adding a new size for the bigger ring gauge smoker. There you go. That is a six by sixty. That's nice. There you go. That's my up my alley. I yeah, like bigger. Yeah. yeah. And 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 I'm surprised about it because I don't smoke sixty ring gauge. But I do on the factory just to do like a tasting uh, and the quality control of the cigar. And 
I was impressed and mad to say this, but the King's Goal, the 6x60, they have the best flavor out of the, all the other all sizes of the King's Goal. And it's crazy. I'm like, wow. Wow. I, I wish you have that flavor, the Robusta. <laughs> so, I like to hear that. It's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's yeah. great. In terms of the elite broker program, is that a one-time thing you've done, or is that something that you were gonna kind of offer up there again to your brokers? Yeah, it is is gonna happen at the game uh, after this year, uh, because uh, the thing we just, just really everything got back up after the fire. So uh, we did that. The the, um, the chancellor never came out, and finally came out this year. And, and this is something that we're going to continue for sure. The only thing I'm looking for that another broker can win that hour and that, and that Adrian. <laughs> <laughs> but Adrian's eligible. Is Adrian eligible? For sure. Okay, so he's got a shot to win it again. There you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What do you think, Adrian? He might be uh, he, out he, of range he, now. Yeah. He might, he might have. Yeah, he looks like he froze here, so... We'll, uh, yeah, he looks frozen. So <laughs> he, he's probably going through that, like one of those dead spots on Alligator Alley. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you always got a conversation around that area. Nice. Nice. All right. Um, Aaron, anything else we want to hit with Henderson? We got, I got some other stuff I want to cover with you, Henderson. Uh, a little, uh, there's some more tobacco stuff and a couple of non tobacco things I have. All right. Go ahead, man. Did you have yeah, anything I'm else? Good. I'm good okay. too. Okay. All right. So, um, what I'm gonna do is, um, I'll ask you this question first, and then I have two. Um, if Adrian comes on, I'll, I'll hit him with the with the mind teaser question. Both of you guys. Um, but, <laughs> but okay, Henderson. Uh, this is our Florida Sun Grown um, uh, beef question. Uh, it's, it's, it's a question about beef and right. I want to know, since you went to the red meat lovers dinner, um, it doesn't have to be red meat lovers, what was there, but I want to know your favorite cut of steak. Um, I don't know, man. That's uh, I would say, I would say rebuy sometimes and some, and all the times just like a fillet. Yeah, for lemon yen. Yeah, okay, and they're solid. I mean, I uh, they're, they're I I uh, I would probably I go for both. Yeah, but but uh, that's if I'm in, in the states. Here right. in the DR, what I eat more is like a churrasco and flat meat. Churrasco is curry steak. Yeah. yeah, because it's one of the best cut that we had here. Mm -hmm. So, I uh, I've actually really gotten into chiva lately. Uh, it's from going to DR, and then there is a Dominican restaurant that opened near me, and I just they have really good chiva. I love chiva. I just love it. I can't get enough. <laughs> of it. Oh man, chiva, that's, that's, uh, the 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 flavor of the chiva chiva is gold for the guy there. Yeah, yep, yep, yeah. For folks at all, it's really good. It's no, really no, good. Well, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, no. That's uh, that's one of the main. Like, if we you get an invitation to a house here in the Dominican Republic. Public and 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 they making chivo, like uh, this is something very special going on there. Mm. That's yeah. like Adrian is coming to DR like uh, sometime this weekend, and their mm. family is making chivo for him because he's coming. It, it, That's it, what's it, happening. Yeah, <laughs> I I went to this restaurant in the Dominican called Noah. Noah. Yeah, yeah, and one of the best restaurants. Oh Santiago. yeah, that chivo, that chivo is just yeah, it's one of the best. Yeah, beautiful restaurant yeah. right by the. Right by the monument, yeah. It's uh, and I had some really good chiva there. Well, you do you have like a with the buns or without buns? Without, without buns. Yeah, get it with the buns. Yeah, I mean that, that's the way we eat it here with the buns. Okay, yeah, I got it without, and I also yeah. got they also had a risotto I've had there once with it mixed in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's yeah. amazing. Yeah, with it. Yeah. Next time we end the other, probably in a pro cigar or something. I'm gonna be there. And I'm going to invite you to my mom's house. The best chivo of all times. I'm in. 
Count me oh, yeah. in. <laughs> she she she's great. She could that chivo like for seven hours. Yeah. It's it's amazing. Yeah, I'm trying to work it out this time where I get in a, a couple of days earlier so I can see people maybe who aren't at Pro Cigar. Uh, so yeah, I'll let you know, guys know for sure. Yeah. But you, that's what I'm trying to do. Next by the, you have to pass by Robert Patrick. Yep. I will. I definitely will. I'm looking forward to that. I'm really looking forward to that. And then, so the key thing is you got to get in before, the, once the event starts, it's, we're, we're, we're just tied up. So I got to do it earlier. Uh, get in a little earlier. So uh, for that. All right. So I have another question for you guys. And uh, got, I got a few more questions, but let me ask this question. This is what we call our ties that bind question. Um, and the ties that bind question is brought to you by Altidus USA. Elevate your humidor at Altidus USA cigars. Explore top-rated classics like the H. Upman Banker Day Trader. Trinidad Spirit 2 Series Number 1. Monte Cristo 1935 Anniversary Edition Edition Diamante. And the Adrian Wim Quattro Nicaragua Sonata. All boasting a 93 rating from Cigar Aficionado. Light up, relax, savor every puff of excellence. So in the ties that bind, I'm going to name three things to you guys, okay? And you got to tell me what they all have in common, okay? Now, he here's the trick with this, okay? I'm going to tell you one thing they have in common, but there's something else they have in common, okay? Since you guys are all about explorers, uh, these, are all these are all explorers from the age of exploration. Okay, so I'm going to test your, your history a little here. And I think this is a tough question, okay? So if you don't get it, I'll kind of throw some hints. Maybe you can get it. But I'm going to name three explorers, and you got to tell me what they all have in common. And, and the, ex the answer is it's not that they found the new world or anything like that. It's, it's, it's a little more than that. So the first, the first explorer is Ferdinand Magellan. He did the circumnavigation. <laughs> the second one is Henry Hudson, who explored up in – the northern parts of uh, the Americas. And the third one is a guy by the name of Giovanni de Verrazano, and he's famous for exploring the area that which created a bridge called the Verrazano Bridge, which, Adrian, I know you're familiar with. Yep. Uh, it's my favorite bridge in the world. Uh, it, I, I lived in Brooklyn and Staten Island, and that's what connected, connected the two, and I, I love that bridge. I don't get enough of that bridge. I've actually bike rided on that bridge, by the way, <laughs> which is very tough extremely hard to bike ride that bridge. Uh, you won't believe the, the slope that's on that thing. So, what do they all have in common? Bernahan Magellan, Henry Hudson, and Giovanni de Verzano. They're all captain. They were all captains. Yes, they were all captains. Something else. <laughs> uh, they all smoked cigars. Did they? <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe. Uh, maybe, yeah. Maybe they did. I don't know. Maybe pipe smokers? I don't know. Yeah. Um... So there's something that they, they all had in common when they took a particular voyage. Aaron, do you know... When they, when, when they take a particular what? When they did a, a voyage. A voyage. And, oh. And particularly uh, one of their last voyages. Uh, they, all have, they all have maps. Nah, not quite. They all, did they all die on a voyage? They all died on their voyage. They all died. <laughs> they all died. Okay. <laughs> they all died on their. Voyage. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they Magellan. I think. I I forget how Magellan died. If they revolted on him or not. Uh, but he died in the Philippines. Henry Hudson disappeared, and similar thing happened to Verrazano. Henry Hudson disappeared in Hudson Bay. They never found out what happened to him. He just never came back. So. Okay. Uh, well, one of the sizes that we have in the navigator for the European market was called a Magellan. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, rem I remember we talked about that. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Uh, but, but yeah, they all died here. Okay. Right. Yeah. There you go. There you go. I, I know they, were, they all were dead. I don't know how they died exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they all died on a voyage. Yeah. They all died on their last voyage. Yeah. Uh, so, all right. Uh, I got to just read a couple of things, and I have a, a quick segment for you to wrap for you guys to wrap up with before we go. Uh, so let me just kind of read through uh, some of our sponsors here, and let me first mention um, JRE Tobacco. The authentic Corojo leaf is one of the most robust and flavorful tobacco leaves out there. During the golden age of cigars, Cuba, the leaf of choice to make some of the world's greatest cigars because it's one of the most challenging ones to cultivate. It fell out of favor by the 1990s. 
in the Hamastron Valley in Honduras. Julio uh, Aroa took on the challenge of growing Coro from the original seeds. And in 2000, he successfully reintroduced Coro back to the market. With over 50 years' experience in the tobacco business, from growing and curing tobacco to scar production, the Jerry Tobacco Farm has been able to continue to deliver products to market with authentic Corojo. Now with Jerry Tobacco, who is in the so bring the very own brand to market. Aladino is available in a wide variety of blends, including the latest release, Aladino Fuma Noche. Each represents the golden age of cigars from 1947 to 1961. They're available at your local retailer. Be sure to ask for Jerry Tobacco, a legacy that is tasted in every drawer. And by Corona Cigar Company. At Corona Cigar Company, they take fact that they are cigar fanatics just like you. That's why you'll find the best selection of the rarest and finest premium cigars available anywhere in the world. Plus, they have special limited edition cigars available exclusively to Corona Cigar from famous international cigar makers such as Padron, Rue Estate, and Aganor Salif. They have the best customers, uh, best cigar selection, best customer service, and money-saving discount cigar prices. But don't just take their word for it. Forbes Magazine selected Corona Cigar as best to the web. Corona Cigar was voted a top five internet cigar retailer by Smoke Magazine. Cigar Aficionado wrote, Corona Cigar Company, the largest best stock cigar shops in America. You can place an order online at their website or visit one of Corona's five central Florida cigar superstores and cigar bars and see for yourself why Corona Cigar Company is the ultimate cigar experience. And I want to mention again, uh, Cavalier Cigars. Cavalier Cigars, Cavalier's Ghost. Smoke gold and stay gold. Join the inner circle and follow Cavalier Cigars on Instagram at Cavalier underscore cigars and on Facebook at Cavalier Geneve Cigars. That's Geneve, G-E-N-E-V-E. Visit your local tobacco and join the movement that is Cavalier Cigars. They're consistently regarded highly by cigar lovers everywhere as well as high ratings by Cigar Industry Press. And again, you want to follow them on an Instagram account because they do some very unique giveaways throughout the whole year. Cavalier Cigars, smoke gold and stay gold. And we're getting into our Drew, uh, excuse me, our Alec Bradley Live True segment sponsored by Alec Bradley. Alec Bradley, Alec Bradley, Alec Bradley, Alec Bradley. Visit alecbradley.com to find out more about their cigars, Live True. Now, normally in the Live True segment, I ask questions that are um, not geared at cigars. But you guys love tobacco so much. I, I wanted to give you some questions that are more related to cigar culture. And they're not hard questions. They're, there's no wrong answers. It's more of like personal opinion or preference here. All right. So... Um, I'll start this off. What is your favorite wrapper on a cigar to smoke? And this is for each of you guys. <laughs> uh, for me, uh, Connecticut Broly. Okay. Good one. My name is Connecticut Broly. Nice. All right. All right. Good, good answer. I like that answer. Uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Connecticut and, uh, uh, and the second is Corojo. Yeah. Nice, nice ones. Two good rappers. Yeah. Yep. Yep. All what right. What about yours? Uh, mine's Broadleaf. Can I get Broadleaf for sure? We have something in common then. Yep. There's Aaron hates, good, Aaron hates everything. Aaron hates everything. Yeah, that Connecticut Broadleaf rapper, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. I don't have a favorite rapper. Yeah, you hate everything, yeah. Just as long as the blend is good, I'm good with it. Yeah. Yeah, it's funny. I, You know, early on, I used to say I don't like this rapper and this rapper. And then I always find a cigar. If the blend is right, it's it's going to be good for me. So I I, 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 uh, I stopped that very early in my cigar career. Uh, so uh, I just learned it. it's a lot with the blend, and you could do something with almost any type of rapper. So, that, that, yeah. All right. When you light your cigars with a lighter, do you use a single jet, a double jet, a triple jet, not a jet lighter at all, or some combination of the things? Personal, I use a single jet. I like, uh, soft, if, I like soft flames. Yeah, you like soft flames? I, I like soft flames, but I'm lazy. I got to be honest with you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. I like soft flame if I have nothing else to do. I just smoke <laughs> the cigar at the moment, you know. Right, right. right. Right, right. But sometimes I don't have that time. Yeah. Yeah. To be honest with you, I don't go beyond the single flame unless it's a big ring gauge. If it's if it's a sixty, I'll go to a double or triple. I try to avoid the, the, the big flame lights because I find I, I'll scorch the cigar too easy. So I, I'll tend yeah. to stick with the single flame. I like it with the single flame more because I don't heat up the tobacco too much. Mm. And the other thing, because yeah. I don't run out of butane so fast. Yeah. Oh my goodness! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I know, I know. And uh, I can just tell you, butane's got expensive lately. That's all I'll just tell you. 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, thing, uh, like uh, you're not running around with the with the lighter the, on the bottom of your chain, you know. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It, well, so. when I go to yeah, when I go to Dominican, that's always fun. Or, or Nicaragua, uh, uh, you know, I gotta take the Bix or you know, take something. <laughs> I, I do take something. Sometimes I do have some butanes that I can get through. Yeah. But you run out of butane, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. But it's uh, not the best at that point. Yeah. Exactly. And I just said uh, butane's gotten expensive. I could just I had to buy Dupont butane. It's it's a fortune. It's like I can just tell you. I think every every cigar smoker has that that big lighter that never goes away. You throw it away and it's still appearing everywhere. Yeah, 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 right? yeah, yeah. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, how do you guys cut your cigar? Straight cut, V cup, punch, bite the cap. With oh, my man. nails. Yeah. Uh, okay. Um, I, I, I do my nails. Yeah. I, I I had a feeling it was gonna be bite the cap or or, or the nails. Uh, I have not mastered that at all yet uh the, the nail thing but I, I i i know people you guys obviously are much better at that than me sometimes i feel fancy i do a straight cut yeah <laughs> that's see i go I, I go again straight cut i i have never gotten into a, I, I know people love v cuts i could never get into a v cut i, I don't know I, I i i i can i can handle the feeling of the v cut in my mouth i don't know yeah yeah i just it doesn't do it i mean but there are guys who swear by the v cut that's that's uh, a yeah. thing of taste. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and I've seen guys punch a torpedo, and I'm like, no, I'm not punching it. <laughs> I am not. Pu and I've seen guys try to V cut a torpedo. No, uh, it's just, it's just. Uh, what is your favorite size to smoke? Corona. Corona. Yep. Corona Gorda. All day. Uh, I. Eh. Uh, by the way, a Queen's Pearl Corona. Uh, yeah, that's that's that's. I could tell you that Corona. one. We have a Corona. That Corona, that Corona that I make on the Aventura is like a kind of a mix uh, between a Corona and a Mosdale. Yes, it's a little I thicker. Yeah, my forty-four. That's that's my size. Yeah. It's right a good there. size. It, as much as I do say I like big ring gauges, the the Corona that that forty-four to forty-six, I really do like that size. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Your favorite place to smoke a cigar? <laughs> on the on the forest, man. I'm the wood guy. Oh, yeah. Right. yeah, 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 yeah. I like to smoke. I like to smoke in my backyard. I have a nice, cozy backyard. That's my that's my ritual thing right there. Yeah. I I, I love to be in the middle of nowhere smoking a cigar. That's my thing. Yeah, you don't want to be. Uh, the winter is the only. I just in the outdoor. I just can't smoke cigars in the cold. I, re uh, I live in New York. I don't have that. Yeah, problem. you don't have that problem. <laughs> it's tough. When it's but, cold, uh, when it's winter here is the best time of the year to have a cigar. I bet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I bet, uh, and I don't like the humidity though. I can tell you that it's just. Uh, uh, and I don't review cigars outside at all. Uh, but I'm fortunate I could do that. If I had to review cigars outside, I think it'd be very tough. So, yeah. Uh, and not because right. it's not bad. The weather is so extreme sometimes here in North Carolina. That's why. Huh. Yeah. All right. This is a one or the other answer. Do you prefer a morning smoke or an evening smoke? Morning. Uh, I'm morning. a morning guy. Morning. I'm an evening guy, actually. I like that cigar after dinner. I do like that. Uh, but I do my reviews is always the first cigar of the day, too. So when I have the yeah. evening smoke, it's not a review cigar. So, No, nah, the thing, I, I'm, I'm used to be smoking cigars uh, from early in the morning in the factory. Then in the evening, I'm, I'm just saturated, you know. Yeah. I'm yeah. being smoking a cigar. Yep. So I'm very worried that I smoke a cigar in the evening. Yep. I'm curious of this next question, uh, how you guys both answer this. So there's lots of components in the it's cigar business. Like phone or command like points of interest, fall canceling voice recognition. <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is life. This is life. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. This may play in a little with this question here. All right. Um, there's lots of components to the cigar industry. There's agriculture, blending, production, quality control, fermentation, sales. What's your favorite part of the industry? Like the one you really kind of get get juiced about, blending. I can see that. I have two. 
creating and selling. Okay. That's yep. Uh, by the way, Adrian, I, I say this to everyone who's a salesperson. Um, as someone who does travel, I don't know how you guys do it. <laughs> you always say it. I, I just dread the travel. Uh, I, I have to travel for my outside job and I hate it. So, um, Hats off to you guys. You do a lot more travel, you guys, than I do. So, Henderson, I know you, you're coming back to the States a lot and stuff. So, hats off to you guys on that, really. I'll tell you something. I, I, uh, I'm i not used to anymore to get stuck in the Dominican Republic for over, two, for over a month. But I'm, I'm uh, willing to travel anymore like over than a week. If I do over a week, I feel like... Uh, uh, it's a little too much, yeah. But it, it becomes a to a point where you get used to, to travel that like a, you feel like a, you need to be moving around. Mm -hmm. You you feel stuck if yeah. you, you don't move. Yeah, yeah. We we just booked a vacation to Europe, my wife and I, and I'm like, it. She wanted to do two weeks, and I convinced it to go down to ten days. I was like. Two weeks is just too long. <laughs> I, I wanted to do like six days, and that's not enough. So we ended up with ten days. So, uh, yeah. I don't good. know. I don't know about. I don't know about to be on vacation for too long, but be on, on a like a business trip. It's for tough. A week. Yeah, it's it's tough. It's, yeah. it's tough. I've done some twelve and eleven day ones, and uh, it's tough. Um, I mean, when I go to Florida and stuff, it's a little different. It's not business. It's kind of like a mini, you know. Sort of business a little, but sort of not. So I could deal that. But like, uh, you know, I've done a couple of these eleven and twelve day trips. Uh, it's tough. So, but but the way that we do it is worse, William, because the way that we do it, like I'm traveling with Adrian, right? Yep. And and it's like to sleep in a different hotel every night. Yeah. No, so that, tonight no. we start in New York, and then next day in New Jersey, then next day Pennsylvania, then next day in Boston, then next day back to New York. And, yeah. You know. That, that, that of being in a hurry, you know, packing and packing, living like a sleeping in a different room every night. This is like what make you a little crazier. Of, yeah, you can't and eating outside routine. in the street also. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I have done that and uh, I don't like that. In fact, that's what was the, the Europe thing. What I said, we, we can't be switching hotels for 10 days. I just we, we can't do that. I'm like, so. <laughs> William, um, I, have, I, have a, I have an invitation for you. And yeah. for and for Aaron as well, let's do let's do when we when we traveling doing a touring, we want to invite you guys to travel for a day with Adventure on the road, so so you can experience uh, go to different retailers, doing an event, uh, eating here, eating there, meeting great people. I mean, I think we never do that before. I don't know if you do that before, like uh, as an invitation, but that can be fun. Um, yeah, I'm fun. dead. I'm dead serious about this. Let's let's really make that happen. I, I think it'll be a great piece to do. I, I honestly think it'll be great to do that. Uh, uh, I'm just looking for some, yeah, I, I I accept that, and we should really make this happen. Yeah. Or we make a party every day. Yeah. <laughs> I want to on the road. On yeah. the road. On the yeah. road. Like Anderson, don't probably. worry. I gonna I gonna beat him. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, I'm sure you will. It's all good. I was exhausted you from know, that Mexico trip. I was like, <laughs> the, the the you know one time we took like a uh, our marketing guy uh to travel with us, so they want to like record like all the all the story that we did, see this and that, like social media, and that was like a three day trip for her and like by the second day she never talked to us before. <laughs> 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 uh, nice. oh, all right and the last question of the night this isn't a tobacco question but it's a cigar industry question uh there's 12 months in the year what is the month of the year you think we should have a trade show i will say somewhere around may uh, yeah, that's my, that's my I, I answer. I would say April. I would say April. It's yeah. fine. Yeah, I, I, I think May would be ideal. Actually, I think it would be perfect yeah. for me. It's a, yeah, it's May. spread out from the festivals, and it's uh not right in the summer. So yeah, that was my. Yeah, I, I would I, say May. Yeah. Yeah, April. Uh, I could do right, it. Right. Like May is a is a is a pickup season. You know when the uh uh the spring is in. You know people started to go out smoke yeah. cigars. 
starting the high season for the retailers and they can stock up with product. And then you have the whole summit to the root product and they can still sell it. Yeah. Mm. You know. Yep. Okay. All right. Hey guys. And we have and we have some time and we have some time also for the beginning of the year to get ready for that trade show. That that's right. why I got yeah. that too. I, you know, and, and and TPE, the one thing I don't like about TPE, we haven't yet had that big snowstorm that's gonna shut down the whole airports in the country. Uh, <laughs> I, I keep saying it's gonna yeah, that happen. Ha- that happened to me once. Yeah, <laughs> it's tough. Uh, if Chicago or New York go down, it's it's rough. Is what I'm just I tell people, yeah, because yeah. uh, it affects the whole airline network. Or, or Dallas, Dallas yep. is the other. If Dallas gets an ice storm and you're going through Dallas, uh, I got stranded there five days once. So because uh, they had no de-icers working. So mm. yeah. All right, no, gentlemen. Time, go ahead. Last time that I went to TP, uh, uh, they had some my flight. And I have to book another trip through Miami. Oh wow! Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. Because I have to get back to the R. I can. Yeah. I could have stayed another day in Vegas. So, right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame you. <laughs> uh, okay, guys. I want to thank you guys so much for coming on the show tonight. It was great catching up with you guys. Uh, I really do appreciate it. Adrian. I appreciate you. I know you were traveling. Thank you, thank you so much, thank Henderson. I know you're busy and it's late in the DR. Thank you so much as well. Thank, thank you, uh, William and Aaron. Um, we have. Uh, it's always great to meet up with you guys and 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 also to have the opportunity to uh, share certain experiences and some cigars with you audience there. So. Looking forward to see you guys again and to be back at the show, man. Yep. And Adrian, thank I really want guys. to. Yeah, thank you, Adrian. I'm definitely want to talk with you about that idea. I'm dead serious about it. I think it'll be great. And, let's, I, I, and I want to record everything. It's gonna be like a reality show. There you yeah. Go. <laughs> no, I, I definitely. Uh, I have like a video guy. I have a couple of video guys who can do that now better than me. So yeah, uh, I think it would be a great idea. So I definitely definitely want to talk to you guys about that. Yeah. yeah of course. Yep. I promise, it's gonna be I, fun. I, I, I don't think that we can fit like the two people in the car, like more than three people in the car. <laughs> because mostly like the the back seat is uh, is is half full of boxes of cigars. Yeah. Well, I'll yeah. I'll go with you guys Sample, and then, and then let the guy get you know, I'll take his own car. <laughs> yeah. That way you can film you guys while you're driving in the car from yeah. another car. You know. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking actually. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Be All right, safe. guys. Take care, <laughs> and we'll see you soon. Yep, thank, thank you. Again. Thank you so much. Night. We're here thank to stay. You thank you. Yep. Thank Have you. a great night. All right. That's Henderson Ventura and Adrian Acosta uh, from Aventura Cigars here on Primetime. So uh, we got a few more things we're going to cover here. Um, hey, let's get right into our Espinosa This Day in Sports History question brought to you by Espinosa Cigars. Make his award-winning brands such as Espinosa 601 and Knuckle Sandwich. Smoke Espinosa. Smoke Espinosa every day. And get into a Lazona state of mind. So, Aaron, I got two questions for you tonight. I picked an old school question and a new school question because I said I got to give him Aaron something new. All right, all right. Let's start with the old school question. Okay. On this day in 1959, June 27th, 1959, this player was unanimously voted to the All Star game, and he was unanimously voted because the fans didn't vote back then, which was <laughs> right. the players voted, right? Yeah. Who was that player? Mm, um, I think I recall that uh, it was um Hank Aaron. Correct. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And we got to look. We got to take the, the fan vote thing is just getting re- look. <laughs> I love the Phillies. These guys. I'm sorry. Shouldn't be in like contending for. Johan Rojas should not be an All Star. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. I'm. It just. He doesn't belong on there. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's uh, ridiculous. And look, you want to say Bry- Bryce has got the most votes. I-, I can live with that one. But but even so, I'm like, you know, uh, is he having the best season in the outfield? I can't really say that right now. Yeah. So got got to got to get got to fix that. So right. Yeah. Uh, I've lost. I'm losing more and more interest in the All Star game every year. It's unfortunate. Yeah. All right. And here's your new school question. Okay. On this day in 2017, June 27, 2017, this infamous Mets pitcher died of a brain tumor at age 51. Mm. The keyword's infamous. 
Yeah, I don't I don't think I know who this is. Um I was shocked he was 51 years old when he died because I didn't realize he was that old. Right. But he was um a pitcher for the Mets who was brought he had I remember when he came into the organization that people thought he was gonna be great. And then he had the longest losing streak in history of any pitcher. Uh I still don't know who this is. Anthony Young. Anthony Young. Okay. Oh, you don't remember Anthony Young? Anthony I don't Young. remember Anthony Young. He was in the two thousands, that's why. So I was like, Yeah. I just don't it doesn't ring a bell for me. Oh, Anthony Young. Well it was a it was I guess you know it's one of those things that was such a big thing in New York. How Anthony Young went okay. from a, a a promising pitcher to just losing, and and it was this streak was really weird because he didn't pitch horribly either. Right. This, yeah. He had a lot of these losses with a lot of bad luck. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it was Anthony Young. Uh. And uh. Yeah. He and when he was when I died, I'm like, he was 51. He I think he was in his late 20s or early 30s when he had that losing streak. He came up. He kind of came into the majors later this guy ah uh, okay yeah so that was that was our this day in uh sports history brought to you by espinoza cigars so uh let me do uh a round of uh sponsors we got uh, a deliberation segment on a couple of topics i'm kind of really interested in this week so <laughs> um i don't know how much you'll be interested in it, but but yeah. i am so all right first let me mention uh jc newman cigar company Founded in 1895 by Julius Caesar Newman, J.C. Newman is the oldest family-owned premium cigar maker in America. For four generations and 129 years, J.C. Newman has been handcrafting many of the world's finest cigars. J.C. Newman is headquartered in a iconic 113-year-old uh, cigar factory in the Ybor City National Historic Landmark District of Tampa, Florida. At the factory known as Elver Hole, J.C. Newman was premium cigars by hand and hand-operated antique cigar machines, including the All-American Cigar, the American, and the Anho Cuesta. J.D. Newman's Pencil Factory is the second largest in Nicaragua. It's where Brickhouse, Polo de Mar, El Baton, Corum, and Yago cigars are hand-rolled. J.C. Newman's Diamond Crown, Maximus, Julius Caesar, and Black Diamond cigars are handmade by Tobacco A. Fuente in the Dominican Republic. With longtime partners, the Arturo Fuente family, the Newmans founded the Scar Family Charitable Foundation, which supports low-income families in the Dominican Republic with education, health care, vocational training, and clean water. Visit jcnewman.com to learn more. And by Casa Cuevas Cigars. The Cuevas family has five generations of experience in cigar making. For many years, they have manufactured uh, cigars for many industry leaders out of the Las Lavas factory in the Dominican Republic. Now, the Cuevas family has brought their very own brand to market with Casa Cuevas Cigars. Try the Casa Cuevas line, the Cuevas Reserva line, and their latest release, the La Mandaria Oscuro. If they don't carry it, be sure to ask your local retailer for Casa Cuevas Cigars. Casa Cuevas Cigars, from our casa to yours. And we're going to get into our Dumbarton Tobacco and Trust uh, Industry Deliberation segment brought to you by Dumbarton Tobacco and Trust. There's no deliberation when it comes to Dumbarton's track record since launching in 2015. This has included nine consecutive top three appearances on the half of consensus, including number one cigar of the year in 2020 with Mi Carita Tricky Traca. And again in 2022 and 2023 with the Mi Carita Black. Visit DTT Cigars to find a purveyor that carries the brands of Dumbarton Tobacco and Trust. So I had a couple of things this week. I, like I said, it was it was these these things actually generate a lot of traffic on Coop this this week. Um, one's one's probably more obvious than the other. Um, but um, I thought this was very interesting this week uh, that the PCA moved quickly and named Joshua Habarski the new executive director. Were you surprised yes. that they made a decision that quickly? Um, yes and no. Uh, yes, because, you know, sometimes their decisions take immensely long times and sometimes it's just like the, just an indecision is the decision. So, um, but I think it's the smart move to actually make this call. So it was good to see them make it quickly. Yeah. I, I that was like one of my questions. Did they do the right thing by making the move quickly? And my answer was a, a unanimous yes. Um, because I've been through, uh, the 10 months of bringing Bill Spahn in, the 10 months of bringing in Mark Purcell. And it was, I think, almost 10 months that they took to bring Scott Pearson. So I've seen these searches drag on for almost a year in all these cases. 
And I thought that this was a good move. And and I, I actually supported Josh getting the role, by the way. Yeah, that was my opinion on it. I think he was yeah. uh, to do it. Um, So um, here was an interesting point, Aaron, that I'm kind of curious about your thoughts on. So they when they announced this, they said he has uh, got a deal through 2028. So they're basically giving him four-plus years commitment. Yeah. Good or bad? Was that a too long a commitment to make for maybe someone who hasn't been an executive director of a trade association? Um, I mean, it could go both ways, obviously, but I think it's probably a good decision because you have somebody that is has been in the organization for some time. Um, and if if the board was happy with the direction of things, then it's likely that Joshua Bill will you know continue that trajectory um and the, you know them just wanting i guess maybe probably a little bit of security on both ends uh you know if josh wants to have that uh you know amount of time there and they want to have him there without you know maybe him going to another organization as well um so just some stability for both for both sides i guess but i think i think it's okay um i'm sure that they can i'm sure if they wanted to get rid of him they could get rid of him earlier similar to like a you know a, a head coach or manager's contract in baseball right. football, right? You, you right. can still pay him, but he doesn't have to be there, right? You can find somebody else to do the job, but you're right. still going to be on the hook for the salary. So, Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, Like I said, I uh, it is a big commitment, but um, I also think if you want, if you have to, if you if he's your guy, you got to give him a vote of confidence here. Yeah. Uh, Like you use the coaching man, it's, you know, um, the one-year extensions every year aren't exactly <laughs> the best thing, and sometimes yep. you have to do them, I get it. Um, uh, but yeah, so I, I would have been, like I said, if it was, if they brought an unknown in here, I would have kind of maybe scratched my head on this a little, like four years is a lot, but he's been with PCA Josh for about five years right now. So it's not like, uh, he hasn't, um, done this. So, right. um, so I thought, yeah, I, I, I think it was a good move. Uh, and, and I, I gotta say the board, again, go back to that first point, not putting a search in. I'm just glad they didn't go that. I yep. just think they 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 missed twice. They they did good with Scott, but you know it's. I think you're more likely to miss. You have a known quantity here, so uh, give him the give him the support, and uh, you know that was a good thing. Right now, Josh is going to remain the chief lobbyist for uh, the PCA. It, do you think that's a good thing or bad thing? I mean, I think it's okay for now. I mean, if they see that there's a need that uh, he can't do both role roles, then obviously they can make a switch at that point, but. Um, I think for the time being, it's probably okay to kind of move forward in that direction. I I, I agree, but I think at some point he's going to have to shed. He's going to have to delegate that out because there's just a yeah, lot. Of, I would yeah. think so because uh, obviously he's going to find diff different initiatives that he probably wants to focus on a bit more than what he could do doing both roles. So yeah, I yeah. I would agree with you there. Yeah. All right. Now the last thing I wanted to mention, and and this is the one I think that we all kind of looked at yesterday and. I had a very positive reaction to this. And day one on the job with Josh, he does these reach outs. Yep. He's he he's communicating like uh and he communicated to everybody. Um the, the media got something, the retailers got something, I believe the manufacturers got something, and then there was like a general statement for um everybody. Um I was like, wow, uh Never saw anything like that before. Yeah. Uh, with all the PC, I've seen, like I said, I've been through this. He's the fifth one I've been through. Uh, right. Never saw anything like that before. I was completely, I was shocked, but I wasn't shocked knowing Josh. Uh, and I've spent some time with him one on one. And uh, so I thought this was a, if you're, how can anyone complain about that is what I'm saying. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, Joshua being, part of the organization already knowing a lot of the people in the industry already. I think that's plays a little bit into it Yeah, because I think it's tough if you are a brand new, if you are brand new to the industry. So like when Scott Pierce came in and nobody knew who he was or Purcell was came in, nobody knew who he was. And then you're reaching out to people saying, Hey, uh, you know, I, I want to make this all like, maybe it will seem a little uh, disingenuous because you don't really know anybody yet. But since Josh has relationships already kind of just like, it's kind of just going, you know, being up front and saying, you know, 
you know, we, we've had dealings in the past, but, you know, I want to make sure that you understand yeah. that, yeah. you know, you can always come to me and all these things. So um, I think that plays a little bit into it too, because yeah. it, there, there's authenticity to it because you already know who he is. Right. Yep. If yep. you didn't know who it was, you're like, you know, it's, it's like when, the, you know, if you're your, nor, your normal day job, you get a new boss and the new boss is like, yeah, nothing's going to change. Everything's yep. cool. Like, you know, and then <laughs> it doesn't work that way. So, yeah. Yeah. You know, with the media piece, he, I won't go into all the details, of, but you know, he was very open about what PCA is doing. If media mm -hmm. wants to participate in things, um, it was great. Um, and um, the other thing he mentioned is availability for podcasts. I think it's too early to bring him on this show just because mm -hmm. I don't I don't see a point of bringing a day one guy in just yet. I'd yeah. like to kind of you know we we kind of like to let something get acclimated. But uh, I'm assuming that means he'll do our PCA show in in next March. So yeah, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take that as he'll do it and he'll get the invite for that. But I have been emailing him back and forth on a few things. Um, and uh, possibly I, I've been talking about this townhouse visit forever. And he wants to make that happen for me because yeah. you know, it's easy for me to get there. So um, I thought he had a great day one. Uh, and now we got to just see the results uh, is what I would say. Yep, I agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I think uh, I didn't hear I didn't hear any complaints um, from anyone on this. So, no, I haven't heard anything. On yeah. The negative side. And 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 if and he, boy, he squashed the negative right away. I mean, he squashed yeah. it. Uh, and then the other thing I think that came out in the press release is he's going to hire some people to, I think, help. I think the one place he's probably a little – maybe doesn't have the experience per se on it is the trade show piece. So it sounds like he's going to make some investments and resources for that. Um, and, I mean, I think that would be great. I mean, the organization could probably could have used this a long time ago. Um, so, you know, if they, if he brings somebody in to, that can assist with that that really has the, yeah. the knowledge on it, I think that would yep. be a, a great thing. Yeah, I think he's got someone like I think he's got Lisa Cox already who can help with obviously with the logistics of the show, but I think yeah. there's more than that. Um, yeah. And, and Scott had some experience from his previous job of, of, of trade shows, so right. Um, you know, and, and like I said, Josh is going to have a lot on his plate. Uh, because again, he's yeah. still got the lobbying role, and he's, you know, Josh is the, the the other thing I looked at this hire. He's a very academic guy, Josh. You notice that? Yeah. He's like it's a little different than anyone else we've had beforehand. Um. And that's not a negative. I think it's I'm really interested and exciting to see someone with his type of academic personality. Um, and not to say he can't be political or anything like that. I'm just saying he he's got this academic thing that's I'm fascinated. I want to really see how how it's gonna work here. So right. so we'll see. I mean it's a, I thought it was a it's a good good week for the PCA on that. Yep. All right. The next topic was the number one story on Cigar Coop for the month. Okay. <laughs> and I got to admit, I was shocked that this was the number one story. The Traveling Roadshow is coming back. Yes. The Traveling Roadshow is, and I have a lot to say on this, right? Uh, maybe not as positive as Josh, right? Aaron, why the heck are they doing this is my first question. And I have some things that maybe are contributing to this, but why are they doing this? I'm I'm not really sure why they're doing this. Um, It may just be... Um, it may just be that there's a feeling that there's supposed to be something happening here at this time of the year, right? And the the people are gonna feel like that. I think people are are gonna feel like this gap to the next trade show is longer than it actually is. So it may just be a little bit of kind of in between, kind of touch and base, maybe a similar kind of a feel to it kind of a thing I, I i don't know yeah it, it i think there may be something with the slower sales is kind of what i'm thinking is that maybe they feel there's gonna be this this dearth in the summer like they used to people doing the numbers and they're you know they're gonna have slower numbers it's probably been slower and uh to some extent following the trade show because everyone's gotten trade show orders and now you got to try to get more trade show orders and somehow i think they think this may be a good idea so i think that's what's maybe triggering it um, and maybe that you, I think kind of fits in what you said with that. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I, I don't know. I got in and, and, um, I'll be completely honest with you on this. Um, I did not hear very positive things about the last one. I didn't go okay. to it. Now I, I, I am going to try to crash the one in Charlotte. Right. Uh, I'm just, it's, it's at Casa de Monte Cristo. Um, I'm not, I'm going to just go up there that day. And yeah. see what I can find. If I'm in town, I'll, I'll see what I can find out. 
Uh, I'm not gonna cover it. I'm just. I want to observe it. I want to see what what they're doing. Yeah, just kind of uh, you know, get a view of it. So they are they're doing a couple of days in Charlotte. Um, it's not from what I looked at the schedule. It's I don't think you're gonna have like uh, I don't just pick a name out like Christian Aroa going to like 16 different cities. I, I don't see that. I right. see them all locally supported. I think is what's gonna be. Yeah. So yeah, that's what I would think. Yeah. Now there's four companies involved with this mm -hmm. and i want to know who benefits the most and who benefits the least from this and the four companies are oliva cle altidus and rocky patel who benefits the most and who benefits the least i would think the cle probably benefits the most that was my because answer. they're the smallest company here right yeah um just some more just more visibility to because of the bigger players that are around them, I think would be, would be my thoughts. Right. Um, but who benefits the least? That's a tough question. Um, see, there's lots of things going on here. So like you mentioned, there's, there's a few events that are at Costa de Monte Cristo, which, which is uh, owned right. by all to this, right? Yep. So you have the fact that one of the brands owns some of the venues. Yep. But there's also the thought that some retailers aren't going to want to come to a, another shop to do their business, right? So I don't know if that hurts all to this more or not. Um, or if, you know, playing on some home turf helps all to this more and it hurts maybe Rocky or Oliva. Yeah. So I, I'm not really sure how that plays out. I I actually said I actually said it was gonna be Rocky Patel hmm. because they do so many events. I mean, maybe Oliva would be the other one. Um Oliva does a lot of their big like you do a lot of your big buys at the trade show with Oliva. Right. Uh and Rocky's always on the road, but so is Oliva. But maybe I'll go Oliva. Maybe I'm gonna change to Oliva because I think Oliva, like I said, they I, I, you know, their model is you do a big buy at the trade show. So, yeah. I, I don't know. It, it, and Oliva, I think, was on the last one, too, actually. Mm -hmm. So, I think um, Rocky and Oliva were the two that came back. And uh, it was Crowned Heads and Alec Bradley that yep. were replaced by Altidus and CLE. Yeah. But I can see, this is, this is something I can see. And I'm assuming Christian will go to some of these. I don't think he'll go to all of them. Right. But I, I could he does get involved with or Tom. I could see that really benefiting them. I'm, I'm gonna jump ahead because I had to. You, you hit the point I wanted to hit about. If you're a retailer, should you go to this if it's at your competitor? I mean, you really have to weigh weigh your position. I hear. I guess. Yeah. Um, you know, if you're. I mean, if you. If you went to the trade show and you did your business there, right? Um, do you need to do another visit in an order in a, in a big order like with a with all that going on a couple months later, or do you already have normal access to a rep? Like that's kind of what confuses me about the the, yeah, the tour that, is. Yep, who the audience is 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 it people that aren't that don't come to the trade show? Um, so I, you know, I'm not really sure there, but I'm sure there's definitely people that have that stance that. I am not going to for the in the cities where it's at a cost of Monte Cristo. I'm not going there to, to right. Talk to I, my I, rep I, or and whatever. there's some new and there's some neutral site things too. So I want to be yeah. Fair with there's that. some some hotels I think and things like that. I think so. that's gonna I think that's gonna be a tough one to get people. I mean, and again, Costa Monte Cristo is a great retailer. Yeah. Um, I, we have a store here in Charlotte. It's a great place to go. Um, that's where they're coming. But yeah, I just you know, and then if you're a guy who's putting a big order in, shouldn't you come to my shop? And put that big order. If you want me to put a big order in, come visit me. You know, give me the courtesy of yeah. coming to visit me. Um, I don't have to go, and then a month later, I'll put a big order in if you come to my shop. So, I, I think that's going to be a, a tough one. I now, if they have it at some of these neutral sites, I'm kind of curious to see how they make this an event. If that makes, I don't know how it's going to be an event. Right. So, I mean, are you going to have food there? Is it going to be? Uh, it's going to be nachos like we had at the. Uh, 
<laughs> or you gonna? I mean, what do you? You know? I mean, basically, when I read it, seemed that it was pretty low key. Like you had to have appointments and stuff like that, and you, you know, you'd get your time with the rep or whatever, and things that's like what that. I, so that's what I understood. It was kind of like the trade show. You scheduled an appointment with your rep, and you went to this place to place an order. The other thing I think we, you'd be fair is I don't know what kind of deals they're gonna put in front of the retailers at this. There may be some right. really good deals that okay. Maybe you want to consider this now rather than wait for someone to come back to you. We'll get, you know, there's going to be opportunities. So I'm assuming there'll be like trade show type deals um, they're going to have. But that no one's come out and said what those deals are yet. I haven't been able to get any info. No one knew yet what that was from the people yeah. I asked. Um, There was some controversy about the fact that there was even a press release released on this. And, you know, if it's for retailers, why would you need a press release, right? Right. Um, and I actually see some of that, but did you think this was something that needed a press release? I think it's fine to have a press release. I, for I this. thought it was. It, I thought it, it gets, was too. Gets eyes on it. I mean, retailers read these read our, read our sites, right? It's not like it's that, just for cigar consumers. Well, technically, the trade shows for retail. That was my answer back. Well, it's the trade yeah. shows for retailers. Well, you know. Uh, the difference with the trade show is they're they're launching new products. Yeah. Um. If I was if I was one of these four companies, I'd use this opportunity to launch a new product. Um. And I don't maybe that will happen, but I think that would definitely be someone. What? Hey, you could come here. You'll get to try this product. Um. And you know, you, as a manufacturer, you can make the most of it. Do you want to do the lazy way? Or do you want to do something really really cool like? You know, I'm thinking about like at Henderson. If, uh, you know, you have a new cigar coming out, like like a, uh, the Blue Eyed Jack Revenge. Um, not that he's on the store, but that something like that. I just think would be more benefit. Uh, you don't have to have an expo, like booth or anything per se. But if you have the something new, it makes it uh worth the while. There, hey, we're gonna right. launch uh this Rocky Patel whatever cigar. I mean, I'm sure. Yeah. So. So uh, I didn't have a problem with the press release. Um, a lot of people did. I was surprised a lot of people did. Hmm. Um, a lot of media guys were like, well, I'm not, you know, I want to go. I'm like, I don't think this is something I want to go to. Like I said, well, I don't know. That, I don't think they understand what it is. Then there's nothing to go to. Like, no, if this I'm is going... like tables set up, you know, like, t like little office cubicles set up to do meetings. Yeah, there's nothing for you to do there. Well, like I said, it's in a shop that's less, about an hour away from me. I said, well, I'll take a – I go up there occasionally. I said, let me take – and maybe Joe will be in for this because, you know, Joe's with Cossip Man, Chris, or Joe Grow. So I said, you know, I'll go up there. I'm not looking to sit in on a meeting or anything. Like that. I'm just kind of looking at what, what is this logistically. I just yeah. want to kind of get – I, I did go last time because it was, it was in the middle of COVID, so I didn't go when they came to Charlotte. I did not hear positive things about that. I'm just telling you, I did not hear very positive things about it last time. Uh, right. It was just like people didn't really uh, feel they were getting anything out of that. So, right. um, and a lot of cities are going back to the same cities again. So, but maybe Oliver and Rocky Patel did see the benefit of doing this again. Um, it's just like I said, I didn't go so, but the feedback I heard it was, it was very, eh, you, you didn't miss anything. And I, I don't think, if, 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 I wouldn't be going this if it wasn't, it wasn't one easy for me to get to. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and they may just, I, and I don't know, it, I may get there. And I know how Casa de Monte Cristo set up. They have private conference rooms. That may be where this has taken place. So I may yeah. not even get to see anything. And maybe that's what I come back and say. I didn't really see much at all behind conference rooms. But I can go play, mm -hmm. stay a lounge, I can smoke it. So, uh, yeah. yeah. So, and there's two days. So I'll have at least a two day window to go there. Right. Now, last question Do you think they should have added a consumer component to this with, these, with this road tour? Um, I don't know. Um, maybe you could do it at the Casa de Monte Cristo's. Yeah, you know, have have a little multi vendor event. But if you're doing it at like a hotel or like a small conference center or something like that, I don't. You'd have to do something. You'd have to do something different. You'd have yeah. to, you know, have displays stuff and they probably just don't want to haul that all that stuff around so yeah yeah um yeah i agree with that you know here's the thing i looked at like well Celia could bring christian altos could bring Raphael. yeah and uh rocky could come there himself right or or yeah. niche right or nimish but 
Um, Oliva is a little more difficult. Nothing against Corey. I don't think he's a guy who goes out and does events. I mean, it's just yeah. uh, he's he's a, he's more of the business end of things. So, right. I, I think there is some opportunity to do do something with that. Uh, maybe do some events in the evening at these places, particularly like I said, the Casa de Monte Cristo's. Um, yeah. So, um, I think they may be missing out. Maybe they're going to do some of this. I they didn't do it last time, but it was in the middle of COVID. Um, right. or it was, we were just coming out of COVID. Yeah. At that point, whatever it was, we, we were still, it was 2000. It was so there wasn't a lot going on there with that. Yep. So, um, but yeah, I'll go up there, I'll report back what it is. Okay. All right. And that's it. That's all I got for tonight. Nice. All right. Um, programming notes. Um, no show next week. It's 4th of July. That's right. So, so we won't be doing the show next week. Uh, following week, uh, episode three ten. Um, he this guy hasn't been on in a long time. Um, and I I know this guy a long time. Uh, I think he makes some great cigars, by the way. Um, Chris Topper is is yes. going to be returning. Um, so uh, look forward to that. That will be on July eleventh. So no show next week for the fourth of July, and we'll be back the following week with that. And that's all I got. All right. All right. Uh, thanks again to Henderson and uh, Adrian for uh, being on the show. Aaron, thank you as always. And, of course, thank you to our audience as well. Yes, thank you. And we're wrapping up primetime episode 309 to the Annals of History uh, before the midnight hour on the East Coast. So uh, this is uh, we're wrapping up on Thursday, June 22nd, 2024. We'll catch everybody in two weeks. Take care, everybody, and we'll see you soon. See you guys. <laughs>